so many resumes. Let's see. Okay, let's look at this one. Uh, Mike looks pretty good. Okay, let me actually look him up online. Oh, no. <laughs> Steph Curry in the house! <laughs> I'm so glad no one saw that. <laughs> This is a scene that happens every day. An employer checks you out online. You may think that your first impression will come when you meet your employer. So you practice your firm handshake. You work on your best and most winning smile. And you may even do something really crazy like put on a suit. <laughs> now you see, half of all companies uh, look at their prospective hires online before they meet them, before they let them enter the doors of their company. So that means that all of you were checked out online before you got that job you wanted. And in fact, here in Silicon Valley, it's probably more than just half. Now, a third of all companies said that last year they rejected a potential hire because of information they found online. I knew how risky it could be to have an online presence. So when I was finishing up my undergraduate degree and applying for jobs, I got off all social media. I went black because I was worried about what would happen if I was out there in the world and people could judge me before they met me. Now, I was so worried about the downsides of this online presence that I didn't realize that there could be great upside potential as well because a strong presence cannot help you land that job it can increase your reputation, and it can help recruiters reach out to you. So maybe you'll land that dream job without even having to do that much work. <coughs> so we want to walk through a couple things we found in our research that will help you have a strong social media presence. The first one is to be personal. Show what's unique about you. Be attractive. We're not talking visually. Uh, only, but <laughs> I'm definitely not talking about your face. I'm talking about in your, in your online presence, in your posts, and everything you do. Uh, but help them see why you joining their company would be a benefit to them. And finally, be focused. Have a real message about you, what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. So be personal, be attractive, be focused. P-A-F. This will get you headed down the path to success. <laughs> and that's what we want to share with you today. We want to help you see how going down the path to success, what it looks like on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and other platforms, and how this can help you succeed in the future. So now you guys know that the first step on the path to success is being personal. And on LinkedIn, uh, you have the opportunity to share more about yourself. You don't want this to be just a digital version of your resume or a recitation of your baseball card stats. Instead, you want to use this opportunity to share your story and to control the narrative about who you are as an individual, both personally and professionally. So let's take a look here at my profile. I definitely have the attractive down. But, uh, <laughs> you see, I've left out the key summary section, which is a great opportunity to share a story about yourself. And so I wanted to look to my teammates here to see if they could provide us with some good examples. And you can see, none of them have a summary section. <laughs> so I instead went to one of my other classmates, a guy named Omid. Um, you guys probably know him. He is a master of social media. And so here we can see his profile, and if you scroll down just below posts, you get to his summary. And the text is too small to read, but these are five paragraphs that give us really good insight into who Omid is. He talks about his background, who he is as a professional, and also his personal interests. He mentions that he's a photographer with over 25,000 followers on Instagram. Um, and he also goes on to talk about his goals, both personally and professionally. So this is a great example of what to do. Now. The second step on the path to success is attractive. And on LinkedIn, attractiveness, uh, or attractiveness of your profile is largely a function of how complete it is. 
LinkedIn data shows that complete profiles, that's profiles that have filled out all the different sections, are 40 times more likely to receive offers from recruiters. So I wanted to find an example of perhaps um, an underdeveloped profile and found inspiration in my lovely teammate, Tina. <laughs> no offense. So here we can see um, her professional experience isn't really built out, sparse details, and education is similarly uh, unclear and, you know, <laughs> Berkeley twice, Stanford three times, very impressive, <laughs> but I have no idea what the hell is going on here. <laughs> so now let's go back to our favorite guy, Omid. Um, and so we can see after the summary section, he's filled out all of the different parts of his profile to an appropriate extent. There's not so much text as to be overwhelming, but it provides us with a really comprehensive view of Omid and it gives his profile that attractiveness that we're looking for. Now, the last step on the path to success is focus. So in LinkedIn, focus is largely manifested through the use of keywords. These are words and phrases that you're gonna pepper throughout your profile, um, and they're really important because it determines how your profile will be treated by the LinkedIn search algorithm. So this has a huge impact on how rec recruiters will be able to find you. Now you might be wondering, how can I figure out what keywords are gonna be most important to put in my profile? Now I'm gonna suggest one useful tool that I found in my research. So I say that you should go to uh, a job description for a job that you really want, a dream job. Let's say it's a program manager at Google. So you can go to that website and copy down the description. Then you find a free word cloud tool online, which is you can copy and paste the text into this and it will generate this wonderful keyword map and you can see what are the words that are most important for the jobs that you're looking for. And so you can see using this tool, you can find, um, you can really optimize your strategy for keywords on LinkedIn. So another really useful tool is Twitter. And Twitter is particularly great for your personal brand because not only does it let you establish your own credibility as an expert in your own field of expertise, but it also allows you to engage with your target audience and also have some sort of unique, authentic personality while still maintaining a level of professionalism. So going back to path to success, the first part is P, which is personal. And in the case of Twitter, this means you want to come across as a genuine person, a real person. And Aaron Levy, CEO of Box, does, it, does this really well. He says that he's the, the lead magician at Box, which conveys his humor, he's a fun person, and also talks about he's a huge ABBA fan, which again talks about how he's, he's pretty, a, a humorous personality and whatnot. Another person, which is a good example, is Mary Barra, who will be on campus in a few weeks for commencement. Now she's an expert, head of GM, talks a lot about automobiles and whatnot, but she also talks about STEM education and her passion for that, and that's unique to her. Now this obviously flows into tweets as well. Mary has a lot of tweets about, about GM and the car industry, et cetera, but she also has personal touches, like alluding to STEM education again and whatnot. Now, the next step of the path to success is A, attractiveness. And for Twitter, this means you wanna provide vi very visually appealing content images that draw in your, your followers, et cetera, and also content that's relevant and useful to people that follow you. Good example of this is Mark Jacobs, who is very, very no well known in the fashion world. And you can see when, from his profile, one glance shows you this is very engaging and very relevant to his users. At the same time though, this is especially important for your tweets. In fact, pictures that are, tweets that include pictures are two times more engaging and more interactive than tweets that just have text. On the same note though, you wanna be active on Twitter. Being active helps you be found and, and be followed. And this might seem a little bit complicated, a lot of work and whatnot, but retweeting is actually an easy cheat. Just find, follow, find influencers that are very relevant to your industry and use these as a way to really easily make content. Now, the last part of the path of success is F, which is focus. And for Twitter, this is very simple. Just keep it short and sweet. Now, tweets are already very, very short, but it's been shown that tweets that are actually even shorter are actually more effective and more engaging than, you know, than longer. So another part of focus, though, is not only short and sweet, but also focus on your field of expertise. What do you want to be known for? Is there a certain industry you want to be known for? And if that's the case, like Aaron Levy, if you want to be an expert in tech, convey that through your focus. Put most of your content relevant to whatever you want to be known for. And through these steps, now you should know the path to success very well. Um, this is a great way to craft your Twitter strategy and, and showcase your personal brand. 
So now you guys have seen what the path of success looks like in the professional context, but actually goes beyond that into the personal context. As the only single person on team three, <laughs> my team gave me some indirect advice and said, Rajan, why don't you research more what the path to success looks like in the online dating world? <laughs> so I did my research, looked up a lot, and learned a whole lot. Things like, if you put surfing as a hobby, you're actually more likely to get engagement. <laughs> However, as I thought about this more and reflected on the most important part of the PATH model, P, being personal, especially in this context, I realized what's most important is actually being genuine. It's just like dating in real life. What's most important is that you are yourself and not necessarily trying to maximize the number of connections you get, but rather getting the right quality of connection. So the advice we have for you is, sure, there are tips you could do to actually get more swipe rights, but rather, it's about getting the right ones. So if you're not funny, don't try and be funny and, and make jokes. If you are, let that come through in your profile. But this all comes through more than just the words, even the pictures. One thing you can do is illustrate who you are by having pictures that show your hobbies. Sure, you probably have this great picture of you from a wedding that's framed really well and you look great, but Take something more natural, something that shows who you are. We're all full, well-rounded people, and why we may be defined by a profession, they're hobbies that we have that define us as well. So show that through your profile pictures. Now, speaking of pictures, A, attractive. There are a few things you can do and a few things you should avoid. One thing to avoid is what we call the Where's Waldo picture. <laughs> We know you have a lot of friends and you're popular and your friends are good looking too, but who are you and what am I looking for here? <laughs> the other thing you can do is make sure you smile. Make sure you have a high resolution picture, something clear that you can see, especially for your default picture. And again, be genuine, be yourself. Let your personality show. Something that's very unattractive is negativity. So avoid making negative statements. Instead, try and reframe things in a positive light. <laughs> You're much more likely to get engagement. And this one, something personally I care about, one of the biggest turnoffs, spelling mistakes and bad grammar. So make sure you proofread your profile and any messages you send to avoid that. And lastly is the importance of focus. One of the reasons focus really matters is because on your profile, you're not just trying to show other people who you are, you're also indicating to them what you're looking for. So be very clear in what that is and be explicit. Are you looking for a hookup? Are you looking for casual dating? Or are you looking to find the love of your life? Whatever it is, you should say that clearly and make that focused. You don't want to show up on a date and have mixed expectations there. Also, instead of saying things in terms of what you're looking for in a characteristic, try and frame it in a values perspective. That focus <laughs> is actually much better. So again, we hope that this uh, path to success can, can help you both in professional and personal realms. Um, I'm actually really happy that I get the last word on this. So I thought what we should do is take a minute and actually let's criticize everything that's wrong with Eric's LinkedIn profile. <laughs> I'm actually going to take the high road on this one. Um, so we've shown you the, the importance of having a social media profile. Why? Because it's the first impression that you bring to people. As Andy mentioned, before people get on the call with you, what do they do? They either, either Google you or they look you up on LinkedIn. So while some of us think that it is an option not to have a great social media profile, that's not the case. Because before you walk into the door, Someone has looked you up and they have an idea. They've already pre-formed a bias about what they think about you. So why don't we have better social media profiles? Why didn't I have a better LinkedIn profile? I don't know, because it's overwhelming. It takes time. I'm not an expert. I don't know what to do. Um, and all of these different reasons, right? But we've shown you guys a framework, the PATH framework, 
that will help you get on your first step to bettering your social media profile. So again, PATH is personal, attractive, and focused. In fact, I myself was so inspired by my teammates' feedback and by this framework that I ended up updating my own personal, my LinkedIn profile. So I added a summary, I added content, and then I added a bunch of my interests. And it actually, did, thank you, <laughs> you're clapping for me. <laughs> it actually did not take me more than a couple of hours. And what was really surprising to me was that I actually, within an hour, I got a notice from uh, LinkedIn saying that my profile ranking has increased by 3%. And I felt so much more comfortable adding people on LinkedIn. So I think some of you received, probably in the last couple of days, you received a lot of <laughs> LinkedIn invitations from me because I'm just so much more confident in my, in my profile. And I, no, I didn't go to Stanford three times, so I removed that as well. <laughs> So to help you guys um, on your first step to better your social profile, we put together a handout with the PATH framework. Um, and you can guys, I think we have it at the end of each row, so if you don't mind passing it down. So after this presentation, take a look and make a commitment like I did to improve at least one area of one of your social media platforms, and then you'll see the benefits. 